Crave, uh, welcome. Um, this is uh, The Fix, and we're going to be starting off with uh, recognizing some Cravers who are heading to Argentina on Saturday, uh, July 7th, and we just want to recognize them, be praying for them. And so we're just going to take a moment to talk to some of the team here. Um, and can you guys give introductions of like your name and why you're going on this trip? How's it going? I'm Robert. Um, I'm going to uh, just just spread the good word of Jesus. I'm uh, we're <clears throat> we're going down to plant a sa uh, Saddleback Church in Buenos Aires, and I was offered to go, and I immediately said yes. This is this is going to be an exciting adventure, and I'm just excited to spread the good word of Jesus. I'm Cody. And just excited about the opportunity to go share the gospel with people in another country that haven't heard it and um, start working towards a church that's geared towards reaching the unreached people groups of the world. Um, I'm Tyler, um, and I'm just excited to go and be the hands and feet of Christ and, and share the love of, of, of Him um, with people who have never never heard His name. So. How's it going? I'm Corey. Um, my first heard Rick's vision about the uh, 12 cities last summer. Immediately, uh, me and Mark knew it was something that we wanted to get involved in. And then, um, you know, about five months after that, we got presented the uh, offer to go to Buenos Aires with uh, a couple of our best friends. So I knew it was an offer that I just couldn't pass up. I really felt God calling me there. Um, Cody, can you tell us a little bit more about how we can be praying for you guys on this trip? Yeah, as we said, uh, this is like a scouting trip for the Saddleback Church that's going to be planted in Buenos Aires. So we'll be doing two different things while we're down there. Um, half of our time is going to be spent partnering with a local church down there that's reaching the same uh, target audience that Saddleback is looking to reach. And so we're going to see how they do ministry, how they do outreach, and just getting the opportunity to work alongside that church. And then our, the other half of our time is going to be spent with the people in the neighborhood where Saddleback's going to plant. So we're going to be going to cafes and parks and just walking around the city and getting to know the people there, building relationships, hearing what their needs are, what are the things that they're looking for, um, so that when we go back with the church plant that uh, we know how to reach these people and what are the needs that are going to bring them in. Um, so just be praying for us uh, that God would use us in a, in a special way down there. Pray that God would continue to just fill us up with his spirit so that we could pour out to the people that we're going to be spending time with. Um, and just so that we would continue to, to be united together as friends um, and also with the rest of the people on our trip, uh, that those relationships would remain strong and we'd be able to serve Christ together while we're down there. Awesome. Um, well, before we pray, I just wanted to share a verse with you. And as we pray together, one of the things that's so important about um, recognizing uh, missions trips and commissioning and sending out these teams is it's one of the traditions of our faith. Uh, way back to the days of Paul um, and even past the time of Paul, uh, faith communities that, of, of Christianity and our faith would uh, recognize a calling to ministry or that God has been calling these individuals in case, in this case, Tyler, Robert, Corey, Cody, and the rest of the team, that we recognize that God has called them on this trip. And so we want to publicly... Um, Pray together, um, use this video as a chance to do that, and it's also a sign of unity for our church to just come together and to pray and to send this team out. So would you guys please uh, join me in praying for them, uh, just remember them throughout the week as they're gone, and just be lifting up the prayer request that Cody uh, mentioned. So the verse that I want to read is uh, from Romans 10. It says, How can they call on the one who they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Now, I've seen these guys' feet, and they're not that beautiful, but what they're talking about here is the spiritual implications and the beauty behind those feet and the willingness of their hearts to be able to uh, go on this trip and to serve. So we thank you guys for doing that, and we support you, and we will, we'll be praying for you guys as we go. So uh, let's uh, close this part with prayer. God, thank you so much uh, for these men and their desire to serve you and to go uh, to Buenos Aires and just to be able to help Saddleback plant churches there and to be a part of ministering with other churches and reaching people who don't know you, God. And Lord, we're so excited to see what you do uh, with this trip. And we know that um, your ministry does not return void. And so we pray for team unity. We pray that they would be able to uh, remain committed as a team, that they would be uh, following their team leader uh, that their health would remain strong and they would have boldness, God, to, to take that step and to ask a question and to be willing to pray with others and to speak your truth and your gospel on this trip. And may the Crave community, may we remember them while they're gone and be lifting them up in prayer. 
and uh, excited to hear the stories uh, when they come back. Uh, we love you, God, and we thank you for what you're doing, and we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs>
one of the big temptations is to say, oh, you know, it, it was so long ago, or, you know, this person was under a lot of stress, or, and you kind of minimize what you went through instead of saying, no, look, I face this. It, it affected me. It is still affecting me today, and I need help. You know, a lot of times when we go through any sort of abuse, um, I think it's natural for us to question God. Like, God, how could you let this happen to me? Like, I was an innocent, vulnerable child. Um, or if it's a present situation, like, how could this have happened, you know, a month ago, a year ago? And God wants you to know that you, that He is right there in the midst of, of your pain, that when you were being abused, He wept. Um, he cried. He didn't want that to happen. It was part of the state, the fallen state of our world, that someone else sinned in such a profound way against you. And you shouldn't minimize it. You should say, hey, this happened to me. I, I need help. Um, one of the most damaging effects of abuse on us is that when we're abused, we can believe, start to believe lies about ourselves. Um, maybe some of you that have been abused know what I'm talking about. And you say, yeah, you know, the lie that I believed is that it was my fault or that I somehow deserved this. Or if I would have been a better person, a better child, a better student, a uh, better whatever, that I, I, I wouldn't, this wouldn't have happened to me, but I kind of deserved it. That's not the case. If you were a child, you were innocent. If, if this is in older years, like you didn't deserve that. No one deserves to be abused and their rights to be trampled on that way. And the bottom line is that God wants to come and meet you in that place of brokenness. The Bible says this in Psalms 38, it says, 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. You know, maybe what you went through, when you think about it, you, you can hardly think about it because it's so, such a heavy, oppressive thought. Well, God is close to you in that moment. And we want to be the physical representation of His nearness to you. So don't walk through this alone. Begin your healing journey by inviting other people into it. This church, I love our church. Saddleback has so many resources. And so we can get you books. We can get you counseling. We can just get you in a support group. I mean, on and on and on of ways that we can help you um, start the healing journey, journey or continue the healing journey that you're on. A couple of books that I would recommend. One is called Breathe by Nicole Brumley. I'm about 90% of the way through that book. Awesome book about um, recovering from childhood sexual abuse. Another one on the same topic is called The Wounded Heart by Dan Allendale. And I'm, I'm only 20% of the way through that one, but it's still, both books are phenomenal. Breathe and, and Wounded Heart. Um, you might want to consider checking those out. Um, if this is something that um, you've gone through. Uh, I'm really excited, guys, uh, for God to show up in our lives in these places of pain. So whether it be abuse or some relational struggle that you that's come to the forefront as we've gone, gone through this Crazy Maker series, um, God is near. God loves us, wants to teach us, show us His heart. Um, before uh, we end the video, though, I, I want to just pray for you guys and and just pray for all of us that God, that we would be open to what God wants to do in our hearts. Jesus, we thank you for your love, and we know that you're no stranger to uh, abuse yourself. That when you walked the earth, people hurled insults at you. Um, they stripped you bare, they beat you, and they hung you on a cross, and you died as a criminal. God, you were, you were abused. And you know, God, you know the pain that, that we can go through and um, you provide healing. Your work on the cross made it possible for us to know you um, personally and intimately. And God, through that comes healing. And so I just pray for everybody watching this, God, wherever the places of pain are in our lives, we just ask that you would invade them. That you would show yourself strong, God, and uh, that you would help us to take the steps that we need to to get healing and to find hope admits whatever it was that we went through or are currently going through. God, we love you and thank you that you're far more good and loving than we could ever imagine. Your great name, we pray all this. Amen. Guys, thanks for checking out this video. Have a great weekend. See you on Sunday night.